You're the real gift, kid. Let us in. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're discussing why Encanto is Disney's best movie in years. I am ready. Come on, I'm ready. I've been patient and steadfast and steady. Bless me now as you blessed us all those years ago. For this essay, we'll be looking at how Disney's 60th animated feature evolves the studio's craft and storytelling while still remaining faithful to their roots resulting in one of their most significant films to date. Where would you rank Encanto in the Disney library? Let us know in the comments. From King Candy to Prince Hans to Don Bellwether, Disney has been leaning heavily into surprise villains lately. We're on the same team, Judy. Underestimated, underappreciated, Aren't you sick of it? While this can be effective, the twist villain trope has been used so many times that it's not really a twist anymore. We expected that Encanto might pull the rug out from under us as well, but the film thankfully doesn't have a villain. Well, at least not a physical one. Luisa will never be strong enough. Isa de la won't be perfect enough. Bruno left our family because you only saw the worst in him. Bruno didn't care about this family. He loves this family. I love this family. We all love this family. Grief, denial, and pressure are the true antagonists, slowly causing the cracks in the Madrigal household to surface. I am so sorry. You never hurt our family, Mirabel. We are broken. Of me. This aligns closer with Pixar, which has proven to be a successful story model for decades. You need me to be happy, but I want my old friends and my hockey team. Like Inside Out and Soul, the conflict is mainly internal, which can be just as fascinating as an external one. Your spark isn't your purpose. That last box fills in when you're ready to come live. In addition to learning from Pixar, Encanto builds upon themes from other modern Disney films. Namely, it takes Disney's exploration of sibling dynamics to the next level. It's a dream when we work as a team, you're so strong. Yeah, but sometimes I cry. So do I. Lilo and Stitch and Frozen both told touching stories with siblings at the center. <laughs> In both cases, though, the sisters were often at odds with one another until finally reconciling in the end. You sacrificed yourself for me? I love you. An act of true love will thaw a frozen heart. There's something truly endearing about seeing Mirabel give the overexerted Luisa a hug early in the picture. I think you're carrying way too much. Then, instead of slamming a door in her face, Luisa hugs her youngest sister back. That isn't to say there isn't some sibling rivalry. Initially, Mirabel resents Isabella for being so perfect, while Isabella looks down on Mirabel. Oh, it's nothing! <sighs> a little sisterly advice? If you weren't always trying too hard, you wouldn't be in the way. Actually, Isa, this is called helping, and I'm not in the way. You are. Their relationship proves more layered than anticipated, however. Why would embracing Isabella do anything? I don't know. Our family got a miracle. How do you help a family miracle? You hug a sister? As much as Mirabel envies her sister, she finds that Isabella is being pressured to make a great sacrifice for the family. I've been stuck being perfect my whole entire life, and literally, the only thing you have ever done for me is mess things up! Nothing is messed up! You can still marry that big dumb honk! I never wanted to marry him! I was doing it for the family! To a certain extent, Isabella might be happier if she was like Mirabel, who has no powers and thus less responsibility. By finally letting Mirabel in, Isabella sees just how extraordinary her gift is, and how it can be used for more than one thing. Where a song like Do You Wanna Build a Snowman sees a sister relationship falling apart, What Else Can I Do sees two sisters lifting each other up. We've waited a long time for a Disney duet that strikes this chord. It's 
just one of the many ways that Encanto evolves Disney character types. Some Disney heroines have been criticized for being too perfect, which isn't exactly fair. Ariel can be naive, Mulan can be awkward, and Tiana is a workaholic. You can save for your restaurant, I know, I know. Girl, all you ever do is work! Order up! Maybe next time. Flaws are part of what makes a character interesting. Still, their more desirable attributes largely overshadow their weaknesses. In a more traditional Disney film, the protagonist would be Isabella, the perfect princess who we'd all like to be. Some of us have bigger problems, you selfish, <gasps> entitled princess! Fish. Nobody's perfect, though, and through Isabella we see how the pursuit of perceived perfection can actually hold one back from reaching their full potential. It's not symmetrical or perfect, but it's beautiful, and it's mine. While Isabella plays an essential role, Encanto never forgets that this is Mirabel's story. Many modern Disney heroines are burdened with powers, be it magic hair, ice magic, or a connection to water. Sure, Anna is a normal, relatable, slightly clumsy heroine, but she's arguably the secondary heroine after Elsa. Is there sorcery in you too? Are you a monster too? No, no, I'm completely ordinary. That's right, she is. In, in the best way. Encanto belongs to Mirabel, who succeeds despite and because of her shortcomings. Because the truth is, gift or no gift, I am just as special as the rest of my family. Who wants more cake? All right, guys, where do I drop the wagon? Maybe your gift is being in denial. I'm in rainbow. Without any powers, she solves the central mystery, brings her family together, and saves the miracle. Aside from proving that you don't need a gift to be special, Mirabel shows the other Madrigals that they're more than just their gift. I think it's time you love. More than just your gift. Plus, having a Disney heroine with glasses means a great deal to anyone who may be self conscious, young or not so young, about wearing them. We see how bright you burn. We see how brave you been. Now see yourself in dust. Middle child Luisa has also become a breakout character, with her merchandise reportedly outselling Isabella's. Where most young ladies in Disney films have slim waistlines and petite figures, Luisa is distinguished with a strong build that reflects her gift. I move mountains, I move churches, and I glow cause I know what my worth is. Of course, I mean, hey, where are you going? I don't ask how hard the work is, got a rough and destructible surface. According to artist Dylan Ekren, Disney was initially against giving Luisa a muscle-bound design, but the Encanto filmmakers fought to subvert the studio's traditional female body type. Luisa's refreshing design isn't the only reason why she's connected with so many viewers. In most stories featuring strong women, their gender is usually dwelled upon. The community in Encanto, however, simply accepts Luisa as a strong woman, never judging her based on chromosomes. I may not be as strong, but I'm getting wiser. Can I need some light and fertilizer. Come on, let's plant some new and watch it fly. Straight up to the sky, let's go. Rather than address the sexism that's unfortunately still present today, Encanto creates a world we want to strive towards. With a cast as large as Encanto's, the film easily could have been overstuffed. Yet we remember each member of the Madrigal family. As well-crafted as the screenplay is, much of the character development stems from Lin-Manuel Miranda's songs. And I don't think it's an accident that a movie about an intergenerational family all under one roof, <laughs> since we've all been under one roof together, uh, is, is resonating so much with audiences. The opening number alone introduces more than 10 characters in toe-tapping fashion. From Waiting on a Miracle, to Surface Pressure, to Dos Origuitas, every song explores what the characters are going through and progresses the story. Ay, 
aguante más Hay que crecer aparte y volver Hacia adelante seguirá In Encanto, every song is intertwined with the story's DNA We don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no We don't talk about Bruno Hey, could I live in fear when I start ring a stumbling We don't talk about Bruno even did the unthinkable Surpassing Let It Go on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. Let it in, let it out, let it rain, let it snow, let it go. That's why I'm always saying, bro. The music also explores the film's themes beneath the surface. Yeah, my, my gift wasn't helping the family, but, uh, but I love my family, you know? I just don't know how to... I just don't know how to... Surface pressure, in particular, visually and musically reflects what it's like to carry more emotional baggage than one can handle. Give it to you, sis. Those who put up the strongest front are usually dealing with the most anxiety. Louisa, can you reroute the river? Will do. Risa, the donkeys got out again. On it. Much like Inside Out, Encanto has become another movie that therapists are using to show different reactions to trauma. Although the characters seem simple at first, we can see a lot of our own families in the Madrigals. Many families have a firstborn who feels the need to be perfect, a parental figure who inadvertently pushes too hard, and the glue that keeps everyone together. Above all else, Encanto reveals what happens when a family doesn't address their problems. Think of the family. I was thinking of my daughter. Peppa, calm down. I'm doing my best. Yes. You're lucky it's not a hurricane. Mama, you've always been too hard on me, Nabel. Look around. We must protect our family. Our encanto. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Many therapists have praised the film's depiction of mental health and purchased Encanto toys for their offices, as the Afro-Latino characters would connect with a diverse range of clients, including first-generation children of immigrants. Encanto is making numerous children feel seen. Two-year-old Kenzo Brooks was overjoyed to find an animated doppelganger in Antonio, becoming a viral sensation. Because I do believe that there is power in representation, and it does empower young black and brown children. Another two-year-old, Manu Araujo Marquez, literally thought Mirabel was her when the character appeared on screen. This was especially reassuring for Manu's mother, who feared her young daughter might be made fun of for having glasses. Quote, I completely changed my mind and saw that princesses wear glasses, too. I healed your hand with my love for my daughter, with her wonderful brain, <sighs> big heart, Stop. cool glasses. Mama. Te amo, cosa linda. Children aren't the only ones who feel represented while watching Encanto. What do you see? I see me. All of me. The whole film is a celebration of Latin America, and the people behind the scenes made a great effort to cast with accurate representation. The ensemble's diverse array of skin tones notably reflects the rainbow of this culture. Even outside of the Latin American community, the story can connect with numerous other groups. I wish you could see yourself the way I do. You are perfect. Just like this. You're just as special as anyone else in this family. Mm -hmm. You just healed my hand with an arepa con queso. Some have noted that Mirabel's struggles to belong capture the autism experience. Even if this wasn't what the filmmakers necessarily had in mind, that's part of what makes Encanto Disney's best movie in years. Tonight, we come together once more as another steps into the light. To make us proud. It can be read in so many different ways and help so many different people, guaranteeing that we'll be talking about more than just Bruno years from now. with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. 
and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.